Welcome to Chemistry 1100, a three-credit college chemistry class. I wanted to just show you how some of these different things are going to work to get you going. <clears throat> so in classware, classroom, I've added a whole bunch of material that you can use for this class. Now we're going to go through some of these documents as background and a lot of them are left up for you to do. So some of these lab book and lab scale things I'm going to talk about briefly, the introductory problem set, some of this reading in the math PDF or the matter you're going to have to do on your own. Other things like the experiments, the oleic acid reaction in a bag, I've already printed out your problem set in those react in those labs. So when you come to school, you'll be able to access them, but you should definitely read them ahead of time. One of the most important parts of each unit is going to be the activity checklist. In this activity checklist, I give you the dates that we're going to run from and the standards that relate to this unit. I've also got all the activities we're going to do with some due dates on them for each unit. And so it's up to you to go through and make sure you've checked off these things. As I posted in Classroom, I'm trying to use Edpuzzle, and I'm just starting out. So that's going to record your progress in watching these assigned videos, and they will be for points. You can also watch them through the link. But you can see there's a lot of different activities we're going to do in the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to end with a test. Now, if you're not going to be here, if you've chosen distance learning, we're going to have to talk about how you can get to do these experiments. I'm not sure how. We'll have to email and, and go through it. Let's take a look at this assignment. To do the assignment, you're going to need to install graphical or graphical analysis on your Chromebook. Go to the Chrome Web Store, and you're going to be looking for this icon here. Okay. Once you've got that installed, then you're going to be able to go and start looking at the problem set. Now, some of these are just simple <clears throat> math calculations. We're going to talk about significant digits, rounding, doing math, taking a look at units. You can use this worksheet, either print it out on your own or have made the copy for it, or just use a piece of notebook paper. The graphical program is going to be need to be used to do these last several activities where you're going to graph the data and then answer some questions about it. <clears throat> when you graph that data, you'll be able to save in your drive the actual graph you do and answer those questions and then submit them in classroom to show me that you've done the graphing activity. Now, some of them, like this first one, I've provided you with data. And this last one, I've provided you with data. But this middle one, you're going to have to actually do an experiment where you measure those different volumes of plain water and sugar water, and then determine what's going on in that activity. When you come in, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at some of the different lab skills you're going to need to have. Uh, one of the most important ones is how to use a Bunsen burner. If you click on that Bunsen burner, there's a little YouTube video that you can look at how to manipulate it. There are other YouTube videos on 
filtering, measuring, graphing, and something called decanting. If you want to look through those, that'd be great. It's a little go beyond. And in this document, I've got some pictures that label what the different parts of a Bunsen burner are. One of the other things that's important is to take a look at how we're going to deal with lab notebooks. Now, in the past, I've had a non-carbonless copy duplicate book, but since we're moving towards more digital things, I'm not sure how useful that was. So we're going to be creating our lab reports on the computers probably. Sometimes you'll handwrite them, sometimes you'll generate them digitally. When you have a paper lab book, you want to make sure you follow some of these protocols. The whole point behind them is that you need to have a permanent record that isn't altered, so there's no erasing, there's no whiteout, you don't use pencil. What are some of the different sections you're going to typically have in a lab report? Well, you're going to do a lab report in partners. When you come into school, each week we're going to focus on doing lab reports. If, there are, if there's extra time and problems that you can work on, we'll get to those. But our main focus when you come in for the week is to do that experiment. You need to have an objective. Your procedure needs to include any equations you're going to use, how you're going to change those algebraically to find your results. I also like people to draw diagrams instead of writing out a long list of words. Like a recipe, I'd rather have you do diagrams with arrows like a flowchart. Then you put your pre-lab questions. Then you're going to do data, any calculations and graphs, post-lab questions, and then your conclusion. Now, conclusions, pretty important. You need to include what connection the experiment has to the content we're talking about in class. You need to talk about what are some sources of error. What would you change if you were to redo this experiment? <coughs> so that's a little background on how this class is going to be set up.